Okay, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is going to remove this battery box and put the jack, uh, barrel jack in right here. Now just for the sake of argument, I have a video I can always refer back to, uh, but you can see there's a little plus sign right there and a little negative sign right there. So let's pop this over and just pull these guys through here real quick. Alright, so now that we've pulled those out of there, let's just clean up the holes and prepare them for the, uh, the reinstallation. We should get just a little bit there. Alright, good and clean. I'll just take a little of our alcohol. And clean that circuit board up a little bit. Okay, so it's ready for the reinstallation. Okay, so what I've done here is I've determined where I want to mount this connector. And I've just sort of marked there a general outline of it. I'm going to take it over here to the vise and center punch and drill. Okay, for the first drill, I'm going to go right through here with a small, my 1 8 inch bit. Alright, so then in my final drill, I'm going to go... I've actually put this in the vise. Okay, so a little deeper. Try to fit our little pellet plug. There it is. And the nut will go on there. Alright, so a dry fit. Seems to work just fine. Plenty of room there for it. Not to worry, this little bit of exposed copper here will be trimmed off before we finish. Okay, so now I just use my little helping hands here to uh, help me solder the uh, pre solder some leads onto the connector here. Okay, so there it is. We use a little blue Loctite. Tighten that nut down pretty good. Um, I'm going to be traveling with this, so I may, I may end up putting a little blob of hot glue right across there just for the, uh, the sake of argument. But that's yet to be determined. So now we start on the top. We have to remove the piece of rubber that's designed to hold the batteries in place. We'll set that aside and use it as a later date. So we start on the top just as we did on the bottom by cutting the first piece to the approximate width. And now we'll cut some slots in it and start applying the tape. Now we just continue adding tape like we did before making sure we have an overlap. One more overlap 
and we continue working. One last piece and we'll just about have this top half of the auto tuner finished. So now we take our attention back to the bottom of the case and we'll fit the front and back together and fit the, uh, the circuit board down in. A final fit and the bottom is ready to go. Now we take the four screws and reassemble the circuit board to the bottom of the tuner. One final screw and it's all ready to go. Now we need to install the 12 to 6 volt regulator onto the top and we've pre-painted the pop rivets and washers black to blend in with the case. Now we insert a pop rivet from the back with a washer. Add one of the back black washers to the top and prepare for the uh, pop rivet tool. We repeat the process for the final side until we get a good snap. One more time ought to do it. There we go. Now we have to reattach the rubber that's designed to hold in the batteries. To do this, I'm going to use some hot glue. That should do it. We'll reassert the top and the bottom together. should be ready to go. Now we just reinsert the four screws that hold the device together. All right, finish off that last screw and there we go. One completely assembled unit, RFI shield, and power jack. Okay, so I've got everything reconnected up. I'm running the uh, the radio on this battery and this battery is now plugged into the back of the uh, Z817 with the barrel connector. There are currently no batteries inside here. Everything is running off of the 12 volt to 6 volt uh, regulator through that battery. The first thing I want to see is can we pass serial data through the uh, auto tuner into the radio. So I'm going to do that by turning on my Ham Radio Deluxe. There we go. Alright, so you see we uh, Ham Radio Deluxe turned on the radio and let's see, I'm going to change bands because this is the last band I was on for the auto tuner. 
and I want to force the auto tuner to try to tune. So I'm going to jump from 20 meters over here to 40 meters. All right, and we see the radio followed. So I know I'm, I know I'm passing serial communication from the rig blaster through the auto tuner back down to the radio. Now let's see if it'll get it to tune. Radio went into transmit. You can hear the relays in there going to town. And life is good. Okay, so the project went really well. Total time on the bench was about three and three hours. The majority of that time was just getting the tape on the box. And for me, I think this project's gonna work out really well because now I don't have to worry about uh, AA batteries while I mount this thing inside my uh, travel box. So that's it for this video and this uh, series of videos. And again, I thank you for watching. I'm Dave, AF5DN.